All right, Spirit Radio Dan style. Uh, I think we're calling this show number four. Yeah, I believe so. I don't know why. I'm just uh, kind of having a little fun with this. Uh, getting over the whole, it's got to be 15 minutes long. Not sure if this might very well still be 15 minutes. That's kind of the max I'm planning on doing uh, ever. Maybe down the road longer. But for now, 15 minutes is the max. But I'm not so fixated on actually hitting 15 minutes. So we'll see if... Uh, Maybe I can do this a hair shorter. I don't know. Might be still stretching. Again, we're talking about me, and I have issues, it seems. So today's show uh, is going to be called uh, Journey, Not Destination. Uh, it's kind of huge uh, in a lot of regards. Um, I think many people uh, really, really, really get focused on the destination. I want to kind of deal with the pros and cons of both. Um, Pros for destination are far outweighed by the cons, uh, I should say, uh, right up front. But I do think there's some major pros to keep in mind uh, when you're trying to a, manifest uh, something or make some changes in your life. Um, so I, I want to get into that, but really the destination's where it's at. And we'll try to come up with, um, with a little more... Uh, to back that up, if you will. Uh, I've got some really groovy quotes uh, that I plan on sharing with y'all. Um, one of them in particular by a very, very famous gentleman who uh, was actually facing death uh, and, and has passed away uh, at this point. Um, but uh, his quote's beautiful, and uh, he's, he's a very, very famous man, and so we'll get into that one as well. But uh, I want to get into this whole uh, journey, not destination. First off, this really ties into some of the previous uh, shows I've done. Uh, following your feelings is is a primary one. Um, it's really, really important to understand that if life is not going how you like, if it's not, if you're not happy, if you're not in a place you're happy, if you're not in a job you enjoy, you're not in a life you enjoy, a relationship you enjoy, if you're in a situation that's really not happy and you'd like to be, I guess that's the important part. I mean, if you like being miserable, just some more power to you. Go for it. Uh, in fact, I, I can probably give you some suggestions on how you can make it worse uh, or better if you want to be more miserable. I guess better is, is really you're more miserable. Um, but on top of that, we uh, I've really got um, a lot to go here on, on, on the whole following your feelings. It's, it's a really important concept. Um, it is truly the, the way your soul speaks to you. It's the language of your soul. Uh, it's, it's, you're going to feel things that are real your, your brain's going to just, you know, come up with all sorts of concoctions, going to talk you out of things, going to look to the future, look to the past. Very rarely is your brain happy in the present unless you're focused. And uh, focus is actually another spiritual term that's uh, super important as well. And really, um, most of us experience it at some point. And, and, and oftentimes, uh, it's why a lot of people like when you're doing housework or you're folding the laundry or you're doing some strange mundane task that... When you're doing it, you're so engrossed in it that you're actually focused. You're actually doing a form of meditation. So, again, all over the place. I'm going to try to spin this back into the direction I meant. But it really is truly um, a great example of what meditation, finger quotes, is. Uh, and, it, and it's, you know, it's kind of a, a good way to guide some of this stuff. So, again, following our feelings is very, very, very key. And... Um, Another thing that I kind of think is really important, this is just me, so like a lot of you guys may disagree, and I, um, I'm just I'm throwing this out there because uh, it's a big part of who I am and what I've been trying to accomplish uh, with my life, and, and certainly for those who uh, I've helped on a, on a personal basis. Um, really, oftentimes, one of the biggest disappointments that we experience in life is when we're doing what society tells us to do. And we're still not happy. Uh, one of the main reasons where this comes into play um, is is marriage, unfortunately. I know a lot of people that are in marriages and are miserable. A lot of people. I mean, and there's a couple very, very close to me. Um, but there's a lot of people I know that are in unhappy marriages. Certainly know plenty of people in good marriages. Um, and it's really cool to see that, in all honesty. I, I love seeing that. Um, come from a broken home myself, so obviously my view of, of marriage is is a wee bit different than most, but I do have a younger brother and sister that, um, that, that have been in a relationship where, or have been in a family, I guess, where their mom and dad have always been married. I, um, I kind of come from prior to them. I was sort of baggage that came along with the family, if you will. And, uh, my dad and mom didn't fare so well. Mom decided she wanted to kind of bail and take off and, 
uh, and moved to, to better waters. And, um, you know, kind of that's how it played out. And my dad ended up getting custody of me. And I'm, I'm grateful for the way life played out. Uh, I've learned a lot because of it. I think my dad's a great role model. So I've, I've really enjoyed uh, the direction that that has provided me. But again, I, I to spin back around on topic, if I can, <laughs> um, it's really important sometimes to remember that our feelings are not necessarily what society says they should be. I know they say you should be married forever. I don't believe you should be miserable forever. If you're not happy in a relationship, if you're in a relationship where your other half is cheating on you or being disrespectful or abusive, God forbid, um, that's not okay. That's really not. That's not love. That's not what that's about. If you're in a relationship where, you know, you love each other, you respect each other, and you cherish each other, cherish each other, um, then yeah, by all means, you're going to have your ups and downs. You're going to have some hard times. You're going to have moments where you hate each other. Um, but the love's going to get you through that, and that's different. So I say, yeah, if you're having one of those tough times and you're just upset with your partner because they said you looked fat and you really didn't want them to, and they didn't know better, not that I'm speaking from experience, but I think every man's made some similar kind of mistake in their lives, um, then, you know, that's that's kind of different. But if you're in a situation where the respect is gone and you're more or less turning the corner, um, yeah, it's probably time to start thinking of not what society wants you to do, but what's best in the big picture. And certainly if you have kids, you know, this is one argument I really have where people have said in the past, we should stay together because of the kids. Um, very much disagree. The kids need to understand what a loving relationship is, what it looks like, and what it should be. And if you stay in a relationship that's unhealthy for the sake of the kids, the kids end up learning an unhealthy relationship and think that's normal. Please keep that in mind. And, you know, I'm, I'm not claiming to be a psychologist. I'm just saying that makes sense. And growing up in situations that are similar, I, anyway, you know, there's a lot of damage I've had to work through to try to get myself to normal. And I don't even know if I ever have, but uh, I've learned to live with who I am, <laughs> to say the least. Anywho, so uh, to get, again, back on track for like the eighth time, um, as I've kind of talked, a couple people I know are in tough relationships. Um, I've certainly been in tough relationships. I honestly think there's probably borderline nothing worse than being in a relationship that is unhealthy. Um, it's, it's, it's just not cool. It's, um, it's, it's painful. It's uh, again, you hate going home. You hate being around the person you're with. That's not cool. So again, destination, what is our destination, right? Is it to be in a relationship? Is it to get out of a relationship? Is it to find a better job? That's where I think it comes into play. And uh, I gave all those, those pieces of info earlier because I'm trying to illustrate where destination and keeping that focus in mind is helpful. I think it's very important to know where you would like to go and to, to, glare that, to uh, declare that to the universe, to let the universe or God or, or Buddha or Allah or whatever you believe in, to let them know, your higher self more importantly, to let them know where you would like to go. What, what would you like to experience? In a perfect scenario where you could roll the dice, well, roll is probably not a good idea, where you could choose and say, this is it, and, and pin the tail on the donkey without having a blindfold so you know exactly where you're going to pin it, um, that's important. You want to know where the destination is. But, and this is so important, the journey is where all the development, all the growth, all the important stuff is in the journey, the steps along the way. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. That first step is oftentimes the trickiest one to make. The journey is where it's at. It's all the steps. It's all the learning. It's all the, the little moments of now that you experience along the way. Uh, to use an example of a friend of mine that has actually had the discussion with her, her husband recently, and uh, basically is going down the path of, of getting out of a relationship that she's been in for a very long time. So she's had the discussion with her husband. That actually went surprisingly better than she thought it would. Now she's uh, gone and had the discussion with all three of her kids, uh, each one separately, and that actually went better than she thought. Um, and she's finding that she's got all this support, people coming out of the woodworks that are helping her out with this this decision, 
with support, with just being cool in general. Now, certainly, yeah, her husband's not thrilled about it, but uh, this is going to be a big help for him. I've been in a relationship that's failed. I've been a number of relationships that have failed. Through those failures, quote unquote, I have learned an enormous about uh, amount about myself. I've learned a lot of things of what works, what doesn't work, what I like for myself, what I don't like for myself. Again, I come from kind of an odd background. I think I've had a lot of damage to undo and things to fix. Um, and so I've done that. I've worked my way through a, a lot to try to become a healthy individual, whatever that is, again, based off society versus what's kind of real for me. Um, I don't know. Society probably wouldn't define me as, as, as healthy as I'd like it to. But uh, again, that's that's just uh, another another day, another show. So again, following uh, following the journey is super important. And as always, I'm running out of time. This totally blows. Um, got a couple really cool quotes that I still want to share with you. Uh, one of them is by James Dean, and I actually think this is funny on a, on a couple levels. But the quote is very, very uh, true and very germane to our discussion right now. I can't change the direction of the wind, but I can adjust my sails to always reach my destination. Very true. Um, I don't think James Dean realized that the direction of the wind was going to be blowing his sausage in my face, and I, I love the smell of sausage. It's delicious. Um, the quote that I think is very, very cool, and this really gets into the, one of the last parts of our destination, and that's really his point. And I believe he knew he was sick at this point of his life when he came up with this quote, and it's a little longer, but no one wants to die. Even people who want to go to heaven don't want to die to get there, and yet death is the destination we all share. No one has ever escaped it, and that is as it should be. Because death is very likely the single best invention of life. It is life's change agent. It clears out the old to make way for the new. That was Steve Jobs that said that. And I believe he realized he was sick at that point. Um, another uh, quick one. This is by Drake. And I want to say I think he's famous. Um, sometimes it's, it's the journey that teaches you a lot about your destination. I think that's also true. And finally, with uh, about two and a half minutes to go, and I went 15 minutes again, right? So, I, so much for that thought. A snowdrift is a beautiful thing. If it doesn't lie across the path, you have to shovel or block the road that leads to your destination. And my point with this one, and this is hopefully meant to kind of tie it all together in, a, in an odd, really not very good kind of way. Um, I think this really shows that oftentimes there's going to be obstacles. That's part, again, of the journey. Destination, I want to get from A to B. Obstacle, there's a big pile of snow in my doorstep, or there's a big uh, fallen tree in the road. It shows us that sometimes there's another way to go. There's another way around it. There's something we can do. There's another path, another action or direction we can take to get to our destination. Again, part of the journey. That is such an important piece. It's not always roses because you need to have a little bit of struggle in there. How badly do you want this change? You're going to grow from it. I was a smoker for 22 years. Becoming a non-smoker was probably one of the single most freaky, psychologically difficult things I've ever done in my life. Through that experience, I have grown so much. And I've learned so much strength from within myself. It's just another example of things we've done and things that we've got to overcome. It is part of the journey. I am by no means done with my destination. Certainly becoming a non-smoker, maybe a mini stop along the way, but not my destination. I've still got a lot of things I look forward to experiencing. And my journey is a long ways from done. And I think like Steve Jobs said, I think roughly around then is probably when my journey's going to, you know, finish up. Uh, again, great change agent, and uh, I don't know, kind of, kind of, kind of pushes out the old and gets ready for the new. Kind of groovy that way. So again, keep in mind the destination is important. It helps get you in a direction, helps you figure out where you'd like to go and where you're trying to go. But really, the journey is where all the lessons and all the experience and all the beauty of what we're going through in life is about. The poetry, the dance, the, the, the coincidence that I talked about on my last show. All these things are in the journey. They're part of the moment. And that is the only place you can experience all that. So again, it's been another great show. Spirit Radio, Dan Style. Please subscribe. I always appreciate that. It makes a big difference. 
and uh, we'll do this again. I, I very much appreciate all of you joining me.